I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the life of our BB and to sing for her from my heart at least one more time. This was one of her favorites. We love you, BB. Chalk and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pile of water. So they say the subsequent fall was inevitable. They now saw the chance they were written that way. Jingle Jangle, yay, jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, of course, the star of the movie, Spotlight, Madeline. There you go. Woo! Jazz hands. <laughs> jazz hands to, jazz hands to everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us. If you, if you put your screen on speaker view, you will be able to see the two of them. And uh, they're going to start sharing some of their a part of their journey. We also have Mr. Dyer here. I can't find him. Hold on. Can you say hello? Let's hi, hi, Karen. Hi, hi Madeline. I don't see you. What's yeah. Nephew. Hi, Mr. Talbot. Oh, there he is. <laughs> is it possible to share a screen with the three of them? Maybe yes. Yay! Yeah. Yay, Mr. Dyer is here. Jazz hands for him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us. No problem. Okay, great. Well, maybe we can get started uh, with tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? And maybe how did you get started in this performing journey, being performers and playwrights? and director, screenwriter and director. Go ahead and share. Maybe we we'll start with Mr. Talbert. 
Uh, I was born a poor black boy in the streets of Washington, <laughs> DC. Uh, <laughs> but uh, three generations of holiness preachers, my great grandmother, grandmother, uncle, everybody's a preacher. So I grew up in the in the evangelical church and I watch words of my great grandmother. I watched people come into church. They were some were alcoholics, some were drug users, some were homeless. I watched them come in one way and I watched her words, the words of God change people's lives. So that's when I fell in love with writing because I understood the power of words and um, they can speak so much life into you. And if you're not careful, words can also speak death and negativity into you. So words is what I'm, I'm a writer really who directs and a storyteller, Grio. Uh, um, uh, so that's how I got into it. And then I went to HBCU, Morgan State University. And uh, that's when I, I got on the radio. And then they, they, when I graduated, they sent me out to Oakland, California, to San Francisco, to their station there. And that's when I went to see a play. Someone gave me tickets to see a play called The Diary of Black Men. And uh, I saw that play and started writing plays. And now I'm writing films. And then I ran into this beautiful young rock star, Madeline. And uh, that took us to London to meet my man, Kieran. And so here we are. I, I started writing this 22 years ago um, in 1997 and as a Broadway musical. And then um, someone's breaking into my house if you're hearing that, but we'll keep going. <laughs> There's, they can, it's tough times right now. They can have whatever they want. Uh, but <laughs> what is going on? Uh, they're they're um, they're working on the attic in my home. We're oh. laying we're laying down because I'm married to a woman who does not like to throw anything away. So so therefore we have to have some place to put it. Uh, so so but anyway, I, I started I started uh, I started writing and directing and storytelling and I grew up watching The Wiz and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and I wanted to do something that um, was magical and wonderful but had people that looked like me look like my son like the people that are banging upstairs so <laughs> we built this film one hammer at a time <laughs> and here we are. And I'm also not just by myself. I am also with Karen Hi. and Madeline's good friend over there, <laughs> Buddy 3000. So there's my story. That's and I'm sticking with it. Right. <laughs> good. Uh, how about you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Madeline Mills, and I'm 11 years old. Um, and I play the role of Journey Jangle in Jingle Jangle Christmas Journey. And let's see, I am from a lot of different places. I'm in fact a nomad right now because I've been traveling all across, uh, all across the country and even out of the country for the past three or four years. <laughs> um, but I grew up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And then I have lived in New York for, um, for the past two years until you know we moved to London and all those crazy other places um but I got started um well if you know my family my family is really musical in general and we love dancing and, and everything like that and so um really you know it was already in my blood it was already you know um but uh my first performance was my school's production of the jungle book and i got casted as mowgli which my mom thought was mowgli fun fact uh she we opened the letter because they gave everyone a letter um because they didn't want to just announce who was playing all the roles so they gave um me a letter and one of my the music director of the school she was like she came to my mom. She was like, did you see what Madeline got casted as? And she was like, no, no. And so then we went into the car and, and she opened in. She was like, Madeline, you got cast as Mowgli. <laughs> so 
so yeah, that that's how that got started. And so I ended up doing the musical and it was just so much fun. I didn't even know what I was doing at the time, but I was just having so much fun up there on stage. And from there, I did more community theater performances. And eventually uh, my mom and I spent a summer in New York and found my agents. And from there on, I mean, here and I am. found me. <laughs> And your life, our lives shall never be the same. Exactly. We're stuck with each other. And we're stuck with you too, Kieran. You can't escape anymore. <laughs> That's right. Kieran, I heard you are not here in the United States. Is that correct? Yes, I'm in I'm in I'm in Harlow in Essex in the UK. Okay, well thank you. Because for you, what is it? Midnight over there or what? I don't know how late it's there for you. Well, it's 6.45 now. Oh, okay, well, it's still it's it's not that late. late. Yeah. It's not that late. Well, thank you for joining us and share a little bit about your path, your beginnings. How did you get into this amazing movie? Well, it all started off when I was all younger, really, because when I was younger, I always used to sing around the house. I used to watch loads of theatre productions. I used to love dancing. And sometimes I would even go as far as like, you know, watching a theatre production online and then writing out the script and then reenacting it completely mm -hmm. just by myself. But then also I loved watching theatre productions live like Wicked and School of Rock. Um, but at school, um, I went to a state school and it was kind of like, you know, the girls always wanted to be, I don't know, a fashion designer or a singer or something like that. And the boys wanted all, all to be a footballer. But me, I wanted to be an actor my whole life or make um, yeah, I did like football, but acting was my thing. And I think from about the age of five, that's when I decided that I really wanted to be an actor when I was older. And so after years, eventually, um, I got into a drama school and I did some plays there, which was really fun. And at normal school, we had to perform a play for um, at the end of the year. And I got to write, direct and star in it, which is really fun. Um, and yeah, so just from there, and then after a few, after two months from being at the um, drama school, the manager gave the information about Jingle Jangle to my dad. And just getting that audition, it made me, I was overwhelmed just from getting the audition. Mm -hmm. And then I, it was, it was phenomenal. But then after I got a few callbacks, I was like, am I that good? I didn't think I was going to get any callbacks at all. And then eventually I met Mr. Talbot um, and I did an audition in front of him. And then I got the part. And we, and then from there, my acting career just started. And here I am now. Oh, that's awesome. Yay, Jess, hands for you. Yeah. For you. And I think, uh, Madeline, you started in theater. You, you were in Broadway. So it's yeah. two different two different ways to begin this career and each one of us kind of build this path or I get, I would say the path finds you in this career, I think, because we sometimes begin somewhere and then you find an audition, you find Mr. Talbert and then your life changes <laughs> for right. some, some new directions. Tell us a little bit about how you started as a, as a stage actor, Matt. Yes, yeah, so like I said before, I did tons of uh, school plays, school musicals, um, community theater musicals. I did Willy Wonka Jr. Um, I did uh, what else? I did James and the Giant Peach, where I had to have a British accent. So mm -hmm. I had not yet met Kieran, of course, but you know Kieran's British accent is well. I mean, it's his accent, so I got to learn from him as the years as I finally met him. Um, so yeah, I did James and the Giant Peach. I also did um, the Jungle Book, like I said. And actually, even before I did the Jungle Book, my mom, I remember her telling me, she's like, do you want to audition for the Junie B. Jones musical? And I was like, no, no, I don't really want to. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then from there, I booked uh, the first job that I booked actually was um, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and that was a national tour that I did for about two months, um, so that was also a, a theater production, mm -hmm. and then I did um, Broadway's School of Rock, um, which was based off the movie, um, and so yeah, I've, that's basically been my background is musical theater, and then I, this was my first movie, so it, it was a, mm -hmm. a challenging transition, but a fun one. Yes. Tell me about that jump or how different, because the students here, some of them have experiences with musicals. We mm -hmm. have done a lot of those musicals. You've been part of it in the school, Jungle Book, Willy Wonka Jr., a lot of things. But 
what is the difference or how was that jump from the school productions to a job up to this touring company you're talking about? Um, I think that takes me a little bit to my next uh, point. What are the sacrifices a, a performer has to do when, when is a child? Mm -hmm. What sacrifices you and your family will have to or have to make daily or on daily basis about schooling or uh, tell us a little bit about that jump between uh, just like a hobby or I'm in the school of drama, but then I jump to have a job in the performing right. field. Um, How is that? It, it's definitely difficult. You know, it, it's a difficult process to find the right balance between um, the performing arts and, and doing what I love to do, but then also school because academics for my family and I, it's the most important thing because at the end of the day, this is just a hobby, but I need my degree. I need to go to college so that I can be prepared for the real world and, you know, have like a brain, <laughs> you know, that has common sense and all the things that you learn in school. Um, so yeah, when actually I was still in regular school when I made the jump um, to go to the national tour. Um, but I was just, so they, so my school was like sending the materials um, to wherever I was and I would just, you know, write it and, and my teacher, and we would send it back and my teacher would grade it. So it was really challenging to do that. Um, but eventually when I booked Broadway, that's when my mom started homeschooling me. So she enrolls me in a curriculum um, every year and I get on my computer and I do school every day. And that's basically been my normal for the past three or four years. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it is, it's, it's challenging, but like I said, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't trade it for anything. And um, actually, as you mentioned, you know, the sacrifices also are a huge part. You know, my family, especially my mom has made so many sacrifices to just um, allow me to, to just follow my heart and follow my dreams and what I love to do. And, you know, obviously I will forever be grateful for, for that. Um, because I mean, I cannot even imagine how challenging it is for her. I mean, we have four cats um, and of course you cannot travel from place to place with four cats. A, because that would be a, a, like a hot mess to handle with. B, because you know, you have to find a pet friendly space and not everywhere takes four cats. So we have to scatter my cats all, all across the US and I only travel with one. And my mom has literally everything in the kitchen sink on her plate. So I do not know how she does it, but <laughs> I'm very thankful. So it is definitely challenging, but worth it. Okay, great. Would you like to add something uh, in that regard, um, Karan? Um, well, I would say was because I'd never done much theatre before. I think I did. I did perform um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and I I did Mary Poppins as well at my drama school. I did perform that, but I think from jumping from theatre to film, I think it is quite a big transition, and they're quite different as well. Um, when you think about it, because, you know, theatre is quite big and it's really expressive and, you know, film is, is kind of small. So it is um, a transition on the acting side. But in the terms of sacrifices, I'm, I've just come out of um, a public school now. I'm homeschooled. Um, so, yeah, and my mom's homeschooling me here. I do it online. But also, you know, when you go to auditions, I suppose there aren't many, like, huge sacrifices that I have to make. Um, I'm not sure about any other actors, but for me, the, it's just small sacrifices, like maybe, I don't know, not being able to go to a party because of an audition, or I don't know. Um, but my family, they're a big part of what I do as well. Not just, They support me, and like, if I have to go, I don't know, to another country to do a film or something, obviously my dad, like for Jingle Jangle, my dad had to come out of work because he had to, he was my chaperone for Jingle Jangle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my sister came to visit me as well. So I think in a way, my whole family is affected. Um, but definitely from theater to film, that was, that is quite a big transition. Okay, that sounds great. That, that audition and that path and that Mr. Talbert, I do have, I think I did send these. What are the, the qualities that you look in a, in a child that is an actor um, when you audition them? What is what, what do you pay attention? What are the essentials? I would say the essential qualities in a performer, could be dancer, actor, singer, what is it that you look for in a child actor? Swag. <laughs> you know, 
it's it's really you know when you're young all you have is your confidence your swagger uh madeline didn't come in there to audition she came in there to claim it mm -hmm. what was hers and so uh and karen the same way it was his first time in audition it was his birthday but he came in there he did his thing and before i even uh, met him i saw the audition i'm like oh well he's natural he's already there and and really it's um a fearlessness mm -hmm. and and it's what we're born with to believe we can do anything. And then over time, people beat it out of us. <laughs> Tell them, well, you can't do this and you should do that. And then you just start believing it and buying into it. Into it. And that's when uh, you're unable to really rise. But really, Madeline came in with swag, swag. Karen and everybody. And the first time I saw him, I'm like, that's it. It's, 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 they're not playing the character. They are the character. So, so that's, that's really important. Don't let any of the ones that are out here, if you have a dream and an idea to do something, then uh, don't let anyone talk you out of it. You know, what, what Madeline says in the movie, wh whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. So think you can and you're right. And don't let anybody tell you you can't. Because I've never gone to a, a, a directing school or writing school a day in my life. Not one, I'm not taking one class in it. It is a gift, it is a dream. It is something that I've learned and cultivated over years and, 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 and look where I've been able 30 years to be in the business. But because I believed I could and I didn't let anybody tell me I could not. Mm -hmm. And what's that 2.0 GPA? Still made it. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome because all of you have very different paths. And, you know, this is something that maybe from your experience, experience, Mr. Talbert, our students, you know, we always tell them you can be super talented, but if you don't have discipline, if you don't show up for your commitments, if you, you know, that's super, super important to, to be committed, to be present, and to have that fearlessness that you're talking about. But it's also paths and opportunities that you need to know kind of the routes. You can be very talented, but never being in the right place or looking to or knocking on the right doors. What is it? Where do you look for talent, for example, Mr. Tal Talbert, when, you, when it comes to. I, um, you, you know, you just have to, for me, um, when I'm casting, you got to do whatever you got to do to get in the, into the room. I mean, really, because I, I'm the director. So, of course, there's layers before it ever gets to me. There's agents look at it, casting directors look at it, people look at it, and then my assistants look at it, and then they weed out all of that stuff to finally get to this group that I get a chance to look at. But you just gotta, you just gotta put your best foot forward and just go for it and be fearless and just say, you know, why not me? And that's why I look at myself all the time. I don't say, I don't say why me, I say, why not me? And there are people that I'm sure are, maybe can write circles around me, I doubt it. There are people that maybe can direct circles around me, I doubt that too. But let's say there are, <laughs> where are they and where am I? Because I believe in who I am. I believe in my gifts. I believe who I'm connected with. I believe the gifts come from heaven above and they flow and they hover all around me. And no one can tell me I am not the baddest person on the planet. And that's how you have to, you have to have that confidence in you. You have to walk in with that confidence. You have to carry that. And, and if someone gave me a job on a set to, to sweep the set, then I would get an Oscar award for the best set sweeper. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if, if, you, if you ask me to pick bubble gum off of the, off of the floor with people threw on there, then guess what? The Oscar goes to best bubble gum picker is Dave Talbert. Cause whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to win the award for the best at it. And that's my mm -hmm. attitude. And that's the swagger and confidence I bring into everything I do. And that's what you all must have little kings and queens. Mm -hmm. You must have that and, and don't let anyone take it out of you. Oh, we give jazz hands to that. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it to the teachers. If the teachers, uh, we have dance teachers, another theater teacher, 
Dr. Wooder. Before we move on to the questions from the children, if any one of the teachers would like to ask something or add maybe a perspective you would like to hear from the performers or Mr. Tauber. Good question. Um, Mr. Tauber, are you involved in the process of selecting the dancers? And if so, what uh, do you look for in your dancers? Well, um, I'm from DC and I grew up on what we call go-go music, Chuck Brown and EU and all that stuff. So I can't dance because all we do with go-go music is we stand in one place and we just shake. Yeah. <laughs> so so if, you, if you're looking for me, you'll be in trouble. But I hire, I hire the choreographer, uh, Ashley Wallen, Jenny Griffin, and they come in and they show me um, videos of people dancing. And then I, I let them do what they do. I let my wife, who's a, who's a producer of the film, you know, they're kind of out front with that. I look aesthetically to say, what does it look like and do I like it or not? But as a director, I'm, I am kind of uh, the manager of all the people that I put in place, the costume designer, the uh, set designer, the choreographer, the hair and makeup, I'm, I'm really managing all of them, hiring them, giving them my vision, and then letting them do what they do. So when it comes to dancing, I saw Mal. she came in there to audition and Forrest Whitaker was with her. I, I brought Forrest in there and, and they just started dancing and Forrest can't dance. If you see the movie, you know Forrest can't dance. He's like the old black uncle at, at, a, at the family reunion. Uh, where, but, but, uh, but I brought them two together and they just had instant chemistry. And, and I knew that Madeline could get down because Madeline is not gonna let anybody. Madeline learned the, the song Square Root of Possible when she danced on the balcony. She wasn't even supposed to dance on the balcony. That wasn't even in part of the, um, of what we we're supposed to do. She was dancing on the inside. And I said, I don't like her just running around on the inside. We got to go outside. And so, and then we went outside and, and uh, he was like, the choreographer said, well, where, where is she going to dance? And I looked up and I said, up there. <laughs> and then, and then Madeline's mama said, my, you ain't put my baby girl up on no balcony. <laughs> oh no, oh no, Miss Talbot, my baby girl ain't getting up on no balcony. <laughs> so, so I had to, I had to call Jamie down. And then I said to Madeline, uh, are you okay to dance up on this balcony? And she said, let's go. And, and, then, and then they taught her the choreography in 15 minutes before we started shooting up on the balcony. They taught Madeline the choreography. And while we were shooting, I was like, Madeline, maybe do a spin here, maybe do something there. And she was like, okay, 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 okay. And her mother was like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> And so, but that boldness mm -hmm. and that courage and that fearlessness yeah. is now what allowed her to have this iconic moment on the top of a roof on a, on a balcony dancing. Yeah. And I, I, I figured that you weren't that much involved with the actual like technical dancing. I just didn't know what part you did play. And I'm glad you, you also spoke about fearlessness and boldness because that is an issue that we have with our students. Um, and just really quick before we, because I had a two part question, uh, personality, how much does that play a part in your, in what you look for in your actors or anybody that you're involved with? You know, not just being like, a, a, you know, a, you know, stick in the mud, just, you know, how important is that to be personable? It's everything <laughs> because you're on a set, we're on a set eight, 10 hours a day and you know, like the audition, there were a couple of young ladies that are very, very talented young ladies. And so I would come in there and they showed me their audition thing. So I come in there, I have a big personality, I'm a big man. And so I come in there, hey, how you doing? And one of them like, hi. And I'm like, right. are you excited to be here? She's like, yes. Right. And, and I turn to the cast director, I'm like. Exactly. Because if, if you're not confident and I have to pull it out of you in an audition room, then guess what? You're going to kill my day on the set of the film because I'm going to have to spend all my time saying, come on. I came in mad and I was like, how you doing? How you doing? Hey there, Mr. Talbot. Let's go. You ready to sing? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, okay. She was ready. And, and my job as a director, I have to cast people that are ready. 
when yeah. Karen came in there, there was nothing. He had videos online of him doing all the dance for the greatest show. <laughs> and so <laughs> he was he was ready. He was ready for his close up. So I, I wasn't spending my time having to teach them or pull a performance out of them. I said to Karen, yo, yo, you ready to go with this? You got this? He's like, okay, let's go. Madeline, you got it. She would look at it. I'm like, you got it? She's like, I got it. And then, so it makes the day fun. We have a lot of fun on the set. It is work, but it has to be fun. I'm a big kid. Also, I refuse to grow up. It is a trap. Uh, my wife is raising two children in her household, my seven-year-old and me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, so we like having people that are fun, yeah. that, that, that are fun. I mean, we're not, we're not, um, uh, we're not laying uh, concrete, you know, we're not in a sweatshop, you know, we're making a movie. It's the entertainment business. We're having fun. So we should have fun doing it. Um, I have Madeline. a question for the actors, actually, for um, Madeline and Kieran. As far as being like a triple threat when it comes to being in musicals or in movies, whatever you know, outlet um, you choose to do next, do you have a, a not a preference, but is there one that you consider your strong suit and one is your weak suit? Do you think all three are you know equally come to you as easily, or what is it like training? I guess in acting, singing, and dancing. Um, well, I, if I had to pick one of, if, if something was my strong suit, I would say singing because that, like, that was my first love before I even got into acting or dancing really, or even playing instruments because I played the piano and the bass guitar too. Singing was my first love and it was what I love to do. And, um, I think it just, it was a matter of time before I just found that that voice inside of me. Um, so I would say that singing is probably my strong suit. Um, acting is definitely something that uh, that develops over time. Um, just you know the the because you have to be like natural, especially when you're on 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 screen, um, which was definitely something that I had to learn during this movie because uh, like I said before, I have a musical theater background and like Kieran said, everything's big and bold. Um, and I, like Mr. Talbert said, I have that personality anyway. So I, musical theater was was my first love before I got into, you know, movies and, and well, I haven't gotten into TV, but you know, musical theater was my first love. So, um, and then dancing, I don't know. I just love music. So it's fun to dance to music for me. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if, you know, if I have a, a weak suit or a strongest suit, but um, I would say singing probably was the thing that came the, the easiest. To me. I think it's a bit similar for me as well. Um, like, for, like I said before, from when I was younger, I, acting was just all I want, ever wanted to do. I think um, as I got older and when I went into drama school, I think that's when I started taking some singing lessons or doing some dancing lessons. But I don't think it's a matter of more like a strong suit or weak suit. It's more like what you prefer, I think, um, for me. Because so, I, I think I prefer acting maybe o over all of them because that's what I've always wanted to do. But I do like singing and I do like dancing. Um, but I'd say, because before before I worked, before I um, did the audition for Jingle Jangle, I was I did go I did go to um drama school, um and we did do um so a bit some theatre productions there I guess, um and also before that before that I didn't really do any singing or dancing I did acting I just acted in my living room, or I used to watch TV shows and act with them, um and just stuff like that. So then when Jingle Jangle I suppose it opened up those new opportunities as well, but I think acting is definitely my strong suit. Um, Karen, I, I, I love hearing the fact that, that you dan danced and you studied dancing. I'm, I'm a tapper and I've, I've um, musical theater and I've done seven Broadway shows, but I wanted to say, um, and how I appreciated um, Mr. Talbert uh, uh, that you did put dancing, that you had Madeline dancing because we don't see that very often. And Madeline, I'm, and you and Sutton Foster. I mean, you guys, you guys can outdance the, the dan dance with the dancers, and that's rare. And uh, thank you for that. 
And um, real quick, um, Karen, did you did you have problems being a boy in dance class, or how did how did you deal with that that stigma of you know boys don't dance thing? Um, I didn't really go into dance that much. I think it was just the fact that I was at drama school. They just did acting, singing, and dancing. But I think overall, um, I think also being at school um, and had the boys just wanting to be footballers and going into sports, I guess I didn't have trouble because there were some boys that did like um, performing arts and liked performing. Um, the, Cause I did at the time dance, I didn't discover like um, dancing until I went to drama school. I think it was a bit more acting, but I didn't, I didn't have a, I didn't, I didn't have a trouble with that being a boy that much if I'm honest. I think we should move to the children's questions because the time is running. So Ms. Jensen, can you point out um, and we're going to try to ask questions that have not been answered yet, I would say, from everything that we have heard. Um, we're going to call some of the theater kids. Um, this is for, I am Megan Idhow, and this is for Madeline. Um, what is your favorite thing that you did in your part? Ooh, um, my favorite thing that I did while I was playing Journey was flying, because that was very exciting. And it is not something that you would usually see or do in a musical theater production or even in a movie. So flying was really fun. Um, I had to train for it. Um, I, I started, they have these like harnesses that they put you in and they actually had to get a custom made one for me because I was so tiny at the time. Um, but they started by just like dragging me in a straight line. So back and forth and then Eventually, they would take me up higher, and, and I would start going in a circle and learning how to do somersaults and flips and different things like barrel rolls and all that good stuff and, and fun tricks and flips and in the air. Um, and so, yeah, flying would probably be one of my favorites. Yeah, Kieran, what would be your favorite part from the movie that you played? Um, I think um, mine's going to be flying as well. Okay. I think um, because I'd always wanted to fly. Um, I'm not even um, always wanted to fly in a movie or even in a theater production. I just always wanted to fly. But like Madeline was talking about as well, there was some training for it. And I think also the bit, because I had to go like, you know, flat on my stomach, that was, you know, that was a bit hard for me as well. But I loved the flying scene and it was so much fun. Um, I also liked the tunnel scene as well when I was on the crate, but yeah. The, the the flying scene was his father's least favorite because um he was he he had the task of being with Karen every day and and his whole job was for for to bring Karen back alive to his mother and so he would come to me Andrew would come to me every day uh so uh those are wires they're 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 secure aren't they I'm like well you oh, yeah they're secure good 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 so they're not going to come come loose okay no they're fine Andrew okay so um because he's not going to fall is he uh David I'm like no he's not going to fall because you know my wife will kill me if there's a scratch on her son so so I bet <laughs> so his his the happiest day of his life was when I yelled it's a picture wrap that's <laughs> right here to come home in one piece so. all right our next question is from Amiria Walls my question is this is from Madeline do you think you didn't have all the experience they already had in theater oh um no I don't think so because um <clears throat> It's particularly Broadway, I would say, and the national tour, really, they they both help to prepare me um, to for what it's like working professionally, a eh? um, to just be on stage, be in uh, be in front of an audience um, and also to just practice my skills. I, I think especially on Broadway, um, the kids that I was working with are incredible i mean they sing they dance they act they play five or six instruments and you know they can like tap circles around you so they are like incredible and i feel like i got to you know learn from them be inspired by them and uh yeah so i definitely think that all my experiences have, have helped me and i wouldn't have been able to do jingle jangle without them um we have kylie purvis that will be the first student from chorus and then Ayana, 
thick. What inspired you to make Buddy the Robot? He is so cute. Um, I grew up uh, watching like Star Wars, R2-D2, I loved. And then most recently, um, Wally, I loved and, and, and uh, also E.T. So then I wanted, so if you look at the, uh, the Buddy 3000, you know, I wanted his eyes to kind of be a little bit like E.T. And I wanted him though, to be like a kid, like a toddler. So he was innocent because he's coming alive for the first time. But it was, you know, my son drew, my son drew, when I was showing him the picture of Buddy, he drew this. <laughs> and so I asked him, uh, I said, do you like the, the robot? He said, what can he do? And I said, well, he can walk and he can talk. And he said, well, can he fly? And I hadn't thought about it before. My son was five at the time. And I said, yeah, he can fly. And then he looked at me and said, daddy, can I fly? And that is why Buddy was created because I wanted him to see and I wanted children everywhere to see uh, uh, that you can fly. <laughs> and when I remember when Karen, it was very emotional when he was uh, flying and, you know, we, we don't see uh, people of color flying in films. They're usually reserved for uh, other kids. But this is the first film where you've seen children of color flying. And I think that magic and wonder is uh, should be uh, everyone should be invited to the table of, of wonder and magic and all of that. So it was important for me through this robot, Buddy, which is now an iconic robot, to give something to the world of uh, underrepresented uh, um, kids around the world to see themselves um, flying. So across his eyes, there are two things when you look at the movie, it says Elias 260. And that's my son's name is Elias. And 260 is my great grandmother's address, 260 Kentucky Avenue, Southeast DC. Where, and so the two most magical people, my great grandmother was the most magical and still is in my life in heaven. And my son here on earth. So it was the marriage of the magic of those two people that powered buddy for me. So very, very special for me. Yes, hands to that. <laughs> That's really beautiful. Our next question, please, Mr. Herring, do you have them to spotlight? I do. Ayana Vick. This question is for Madeline. How did you overcome your fear of acting and being in front of people performing? Well, I'm definitely nervous and still am before I go on, on stage or, um, you know, uh, performing in front of people, but um, I think you also have to be confident in your preparation. I always make sure that I definitely prepare and I have had good and bad auditions um, and definitely many, many more no's than yeses. Um, so I still get nervous, you know, and, and, and it's a completely normal thing to do. You're going to get nervous, but I think you have to believe in yourself, believe in your preparation and just go out there and let go and just you know have fun really do you do you want to add something to that Karan? your own experience on that well i agree with madeline completely about preparation but i think everyone also has their own techniques for like for what works for me is when i act with other actors it just suddenly suddenly just makes me feel comfortable and that's definitely one of my techniques that i like using like when i was on set with the amazing mr forrest whitaker I was definitely nervous to um, have to act with him because I know he's an incredible actor. Mm -hmm. You know, as time got on and as we we did our scenes and everything, I felt more and more comfortable around him. And um, it felt amazing, to be honest. And I think I got over my fear of um, being nervous on set, especially on my first day as well. But I think as time goes on, you get um, a bit less nervous. But like Madeline said, I'm still nervous mm -hmm. too when I go on auditions or I do, you know, movies or go on stage. Yeah. That did you say? We all, I always tell this to my acting students. Um, great actors ma make others feel great actors too. They are so embracing and they draw you in and 
bring you to their level. A great actor will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, will never make you feel less. It will bring you to the journey with them. And that's definitely what Mr. Forrest Whitaker would be. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah, I know. Um, we have a, a couple of other questions. Ms. Jensen? Next we have um, Jamel Neal. Um, yes, ma'am. This is a question for Madeline. This is a question for both of you. What, what, or who pushed you to fulfill your dreams? That's a great question. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I would say, well, first of all, you always have to have that spark inside of yourself. I mean, there can be um, those people in your life who push you and believe in you, but at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself to make something like this happen or to, to go out there and, and chase your dreams. Um, so, you know, I definitely have learned to believe in myself and to push myself. Um, and of course it always, always helps to have, um, those people on the sides, like being your little cheerleaders, which have been my family. Um, and now Mr. Talbert and Kieran, of course. Um, so yeah, I feel like you have to believe in yourself and um, others will believe in you too. Um, I think it's um, mainly my family. I think just around me, always supporting me. And like Madeline was talking about, you know, her, Mr. Talbert and the whole, you know, Jingle Jangle family that I worked with, they all push me now too, to be my best and always support me. But um, also for me, um, I also think you've got to have a genuine love for it inside of you. Like for me, I'd always wanted to be an actor. And when I got the chance, I took it. And you should too, all of you. You should too. If you really want to be an actor or a singer or a dancer, just go for it. So um, I think you've got to have a genuine love for it. But it's also about the people around you, your, you know, your team that's behind you as well. Uh, we would like to know about your connection, Madeline, with Miss Sally B. Howard. Yes. Um, so, uh, well, my grandmother lives in Wilson and a, a lot of my family, they live in North Carolina. So I would always come down to visit um, in the summer. And um, of course, my grandmother is, was very close with Vivi. And so I would come down to her nursery home and I would sing her songs and she would always want to sing, to hear me sing. And even as she started to lose her memory and started to forget things, she never forgot about me. And it was so so special and you know obviously we all miss her so so much um but i remember the one song that she always loved to hear me sing was the song naughty from the um matilda broadway musical um even though it's not on broadway anymore she loved that song and i actually sang it at her funeral too um so i i love bb and i love to perform for her too and i miss her <laughs> I know, but but she really she's very alive in in each one of us and each one of the students, and the time is over. But we have a special thing. How what would be the best thing uh, to do to close a performance session, uh, but with a performance from our fourth graders? So we have been developing a series of monologues. Now that you said naughty, the the actual theme or the title is naughty children write letters to Santa. So that's gonna be for our winter recital. And we have a fourth grader, uh, her name is Shailene Turner. Uh, these are original pieces. They wrote their, um, they wrote their monologue and they're gonna perform it in a video we're gonna put in our um, you know, website and everything. So we thought it was gonna be a special treat to cl uh, close the session with a performance because we're all performers. So we're gonna spotlight Miss Shailene. Are you ready? I see you in costume and everything. <laughs> okay, good. Dear Santa, I've been the best child this year. The one that's supposed to be on the night list is my mom. She checks my homework every single day. And I can't do anything until it's done. I mean anything. And then my dad, he's the worst. He doesn't give me anything, even if it's my birthday. It's my birthday. And then my sister, oh, don't get me started. She's the worst. She's so bossy. I even made her room dirty because she deserved it. And I broke her lamp. She deserved it all. They all need coal this Christmas. Coal, I say, coal. It's a black rock and it does absolutely nothing. I deserve gifts. They don't. 
So, Santa, we got a deal? You give them no presents or coal and give me their gifts. Dear Chrome Star, the best child in the world, Star. <laughs> and we give jazz hands. Thank Good you. Good job. Good job. I, 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 I want you to do that one more time for me, okay? Here we go. And I want you to, uh, okay, are you listening to me? So I want you to deliver that like you're talking to me. Okay, stand up, stand up still. Okay, so performance is you're performing for one person, even when you're on stage, even if there's a thousand people or 2000 people in the theater, remember you're performing for how many people? One. One. So you always wanna make sure that people feel like you're connected to them all those thousand people or 500 people, whatever, have to feel like you're talking to who? Them. Them, right. So I want you to deliver that same thing like you're talking to one person, me, and I make it personable, okay? Robert is because she has a monitor and a camera separately. Oh, we don't want to do no monitor and camera. We don't, we- have we, to act for the camera, you, not for the monitor. Okay. So you just don't worry about the lines. I want you to talk to me, okay? I want you to say that to me. Don't worry about the lines. Lines don't matter. Just you. your connection matters. Okay, and action. Dear Santa, uh, 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 you're not talking to one person. You're talking to a lot of people right now. If I were going to a room and say, good morning, I wouldn't say, good morning, would I? Mm -hmm. Okay, talk to one person, one person, me. Dear Santa. Talk to I one person. Wait, 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 wait. One person, me. All right, action. Dear Santa, I've been the best child this year. The one that's supposed to be on the night list is my mom. She's the worst. She checks my homework before I can do anything. I mean anything. And then my dad, he's the worst. He doesn't give me anything, even if it's my birthday. And then my sister, ugh, she's so bossy. And she, I broke her lamp and I dirtied her room up. She deserved it. They all need coal. Coal, I say. And if they don't, then, well, the Christmas is going to be the worst. That so was a thousand percent better. You see, that's how you have to perform. And then in between those lines, always take a beat so that it feels, you, a beat means a, a, a pause, okay? But that was a thousand percent. Amazing. Better. Okay? Good job, good job, good job, good job. And I want you to apply that when you do monologues, when you do monologues, when you do this stuff, remember, you're talking to how many people? One. One person, even if it's a thousand people, everyone in there has to feel like you're talking to that one person, but amazing adjustment and so much better. And I want you to work on that, okay? <laughs> good job, okay, good job, well, good job. This has been a pleasure, wonderful, um, a pleasure to hear your confidence uh, performers and the wise, the wise advice from a director and especially the, the inspiration of who do you need to be to, to, you have to be truthful to these and you, you, nobody can take it away from you. And nobody can be a better you than you. There's only one person that could have played Journey like Madeline and that's Madeline. There's only one person that could have played Edison like Karen and that's Karen. There's only one of you. Mm -hmm. I want to close with this. I'm going to, I'm going to embarrass Madeline. Now, this was <laughs> how I called. This is how she found out that she got the job. Now, this is everyone in here. You all can get, when you go to auditions, if you, if you work hard, you keep the faith, you keep working, then you can get one of these calls. This is a week after Madeline auditioned for Journey. I called her from London, and this is the call. Yes. 
This is David Talbert. Oh, hi. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Good. 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 I'm surprised to hear from you. Uh, you are you are ready to come uh, and live in in London for a few months? Um. Yes. <laughs> hold, hold on a second. You want to tell? You want to? You yes. Want to tell Madeline? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Hey, hey, Madeline, this is David Talbert. Wait, really? Yeah, yes, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. Yeah? Yeah, would you like to come and live in London and star in a movie for a few months? Yes. Well, I'm casting you. I'm casting you in the role of Journey. It's your, it's your role. Thank you so much. <laughs> seeing you in, in London in uh, in a few weeks. Okay, thank you so much. All right, see you right. soon. Bye bye. Right. I'm crying right now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> She's crying I, too. I love you, Jamie and Madeline and Karen, and I love you all. And that is what dreams. That is what dreams feel like and sound like when they happen and they are tangible. The same, each of every one of y'all, Madeline and Karen was just like you all sitting with a dream and now their dreams are realized. So, so when you see them, see yourselves. When you hear that, hear yourself getting that call and that will guide you and keep you moving forward. Okay, you okay? All right, Thanks. all right. I love you all and thanks for having me. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you right. very much for taking time to inspire our children. And we will look forward to hear from more successes and more great things from you all. And we will follow. We will follow you. Oh, I think it's okay. Dr. Now, Wood, would you like to close this session? I want to just say to him, you said earlier, you know you are the greatest at everything you do whenever, whenever you take that on. And I'm telling you, you are the greatest in this particular role right here, what you just put, what you just shared and poured into not just the children, but every single one of us. You are the greatest, man. Thank God. I shall God take my bow. God bless you all. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.